hang up. We're going to adjust and hang up, okay? Yes. Welcome to the 2020 Leaders of Vitrification Excellence Awards. My name is Heidi Hayes, co-founder of Donor Egg Bank USA, and we are here live in Rockville, Maryland. My name is Wayne Caswell, the Senior Director of Laboratory Quality for Donor Egg Bank USA. We are excited to review our accomplishments and to celebrate the clinicians who helped us achieve them. Donor Egg Bank USA is part of the Generate Life Science brand. Life, Generate Life Sciences encompasses a number of the brands that you have come to know and love, including California Cryobank, the leader in donor sperm banking, Cord Blood Registry, America's largest cord blood and stem cell preservation provider with over 600,000 units stored. Donor application, a te technology platform to make third party reproduction more efficient. Kitazato USA, we are happy to distribute the cryotap, media, and other medical devices. And lastly, our newest company is ReadyGen which is an actionable pediatric genetic screening program that will help children up through age 10. Generate Life Sciences' goal is to support you, the healthcare provider, in your quest to help your patients to become pregnant. And then we want to protect that baby for a lifetime. We reached a new milestone here at Donor Egg Bank USA, and I am so excited to announce we have over 450 donors on our platform. Those donors represent a diverse group of ethnicities, from Asian to African American, Caucasian, and Hispanic. And then we have a group of donors that is mixed race, which really represent the melting pot of the United States. 55% of our donors are repeat donors, and we worked hard in 2020 to increase our number of open ID disclosure donors. Currently, 39% of our database is donors that are willing to become known at the age that an offspring reaches 18. And we hope to grow that as we move into 2021. But we know why you're here. And it's really to look at quality and to celebrate the clinicians that helped us get there. Here at Donor Egg Bank USA, we always pride ourselves in our transparency. This table shows on the left many of the indicators that we watch and track for our data. And You'll find our 2019 stats, um, as well as 2020 through the month of July. We always provide our all-time data set from 2012 to current. In the last column is our 10th percentile, or top performing clinics, that we always provide as reference. I want to call your attention to the clinical pregnancy rates on this table. If you look here in 2019, we achieved a 60% clinical pregnancy rate per transfer with a 59% implantation rate. And here in 2020, we've actually improved it. We're seeing a 62% clinical pregnancy rate per transfer and a very outstanding 61% uh, implantation rate. But if we look at our top 10 performers, which encompasses 133 transfer cycles, less than 25% of which are actually PGTA, we see 82% clinical pregnancy rate per transfer with an astounding 80% um, implantation rate, just showing that we can achieve a lot with donor eggs. This is a trend analysis slide. This shows from 2012 to current uh, our uh, survival rate over time. You'll find two lines here. The pink line is by thaw date, and more importantly, the orange line is the more important freeze date line. And you can see over the last three years, we've maintained about a 90% survival rate. With over 85,000 warming events, 8,500 warming events, we have significant experience we want to share. The TS step is the most important and critical part of, of the warming protocol. The thermal discipline of that protocol in the 37 degrees is really paramount to get the maximum warming rate. We used to worry about the transition from liquid nitrogen to the TS solution to be too slow. But we've learned with our experience that it can actually go too fast. So we recommend now you pull, pause, and plunge into TS. Keep it to about a second. 
The TS protocol has a one minute timer assigned to it. But don't focus on the timer. Don't be a slave to the timer. Watch the cell reactions. If the cells don't react in a minute and need another five or 10 seconds, I encourage you to let that happen. It'll only improve your outcome downstream. Once we move from TS, we're going to the DS and WS steps. This represents a decreasing sugar gradient we're exposing the oocytes to. It's important when you move from one to the next to carry over high sugar to lower to serve as a cushion to prevent osmotic shock. Once we have survival, we need to make embryos. And I'm really happy to look at this slide here, which shows a steady and consistent improvement year over year with our excess embryo rate. This year, we're experiencing about a 68% excess embryo beyond transfer for freezing. What are some of the things we've learned about maximizing blastus production? Don't focus on the survival rate. We have you hold the oocytes for three hours beyond the time of warming before ICSI. And this is to serve for recovery, but also, more importantly, to maintain the myotic clock. When you do the three-hour hold and then do ICSI, you'll be injecting those oocytes at 40 to 41 hours post-HCG, or post-trigger, actually. Um, ICSI also focus on a really good deposition of the sperm. Another important thing to keep in mind is denuded oocytes do not have their own internal pH regulation. They rely on the environment we provide. So pay special attention to these oocytes and make sure you have a really good controlled environment. Once you've created the embryos, we need them to implant. This graph shows from 2016 to 2020 a steady and consistent improvement time over time. So we're really happy to see that we continue to improve and evolve and get better and better. The clinical pregnancy rate slide here goes back from 2012, but it mirrors the implantation rate where we see that nice steady and consistent improvement. And in 2012, we're seeing a 62% clinical pregnancy rate per transfer. Just really proud about that, all the work you guys do to make this happen. So you can do the very best job in a lab and have beautiful blastocysts. But if you don't have a good uterine environment to put those blastocysts into, we're not going to have a clinical pregnancy. So let's take just a moment and look at endometrial. use a second vehicle in order to achieve that of estrogen. Progesterone and oil is our preferred method of administration. The sustained study showed us that we can reduce the number of biochemical pregnancy losses with progesterone and oil. So on the day of the egg warming, once you know you have survival, we recommend you put back 100 milligrams of endometrin or a different vaginal progesterone of your choice. And then that evening, start with your progesterone and oil. Preferably, we'd like to see progesterone and oil every single night. But we do know that there are some women that are adverse to the needle injection. So you can utilize daily endometrin or different vaginal progesterone of your choice. And then on every third day, add progesterone and oil. On the sixth day of progesterone administration, which would be the fifth day of blastocyst development is the, the day that you want to do that transfer. If your program cultures to day six or to day seven, then we recommend you freeze the blastocyst and perform a frozen embryo transfer cycle in the future. As always, we have this protocol written down. It is a recommendation. And we're always happy to share it. So in summary, what are some of the keys to success you want to focus on with OSI warming? One of them is be alert to protocol drift. This has occurred to almost every embryologist we work with, including myself. Peer review and diligence is key. Pay attention to the details. Details in the warming protocol and the freezing protocol can make all the difference in the results. This is how we move from good results to great results. Be open to criticism. Be willing to evolve and improve. We all share the common goals of excellent outcomes.
Okay, we're moving on to the best part of the presentation. The, the awards. awards. The, the Leaders of Vitrification Excellence Awards 2020. We have the award winners for most of the program online today. And we will be panning back to you. You're going to receive a request to unmute your audio, and we'd like you to accept that request. Be sure to have your video on if you are currently on Zoom. Most of the individuals watching this presentation are on YouTube, and so we hope to make it very active and exciting. So let's get started. We're going to start with the superior outcomes and egg vitrification warming. We're going to go in reverse order from five to our very top embryologist, number one. There were 260 candidates for egg vitrification warming. Candidates had to have more than 15 warmings in order to qualify. In our fifth place position, our winner this year is... Gianchi Ding from Fertility Associates of Memphis with a clinical pregnancy rate of 68.4%. Dr. Ding, we're really proud of the work you're doing in the group in Memphis. Congratulations to all of you. So I know Dr. Ding is on. Well, we're going to move on to the award number four. In egg vitrification warming, the winner is... Peter Vaccaro from Buffalo Infertility and IVF Associates with a clinical pregnancy rate of 73.7%. I want to really bring up here that Peter Vaccaro is a first time winner. We are so proud of Buffalo Infertility and IVF Associates to be here on our leaderboard for the first time. They're a great program. Hey, we got a glimpse of him celebrating. Congratulations. The award winners, just for you at home to know, we did send some champagne, some balloons, some confetti just to celebrate and make it festive. We should mute now. Because this is such a huge accomplishment. Here's Dr. Ding, by the way, at Fertility Associates of Memphis. It's a big accomplishment, and we really want to celebrate <laughs> these amazing individuals doing really incredible work. Congratulations to all of you. In our third position, our winner is Nancy Wen from Reproductive Science Center of the Bay Area with a clinical pregnancy rate of 74.2%. Nancy is a stalwart. She's always on our leaderboard, and we're so happy to work with her and the team in the Bay Area. So I'm sure they'll cut to RSE Bay Area shortly. A little bit of a challenge to swing back and forth on, on the logistics. Great. Wonderful job. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. And our second place winner this year not so good. is <laughs> Jim Graham from Shady Grove Fertility here in Rockville with a clinical pregnancy rate of 76%. Jim is another repeat uh, and consistent award winner, and we're so happy to work with that group. We'll give them a second to see if they can flip over to Shady Grove. We'll let them flip. We're going to move on just to keep us moving. In our very top position for egg vitrification warming, we are very proud of this individual in a number one place. Colin Craig from MedTech for Solutions with a clinical pregnancy rate of 84.6%. 84.6% 84. 84. is like nearly unheard of. We're also excited just to say that Colin often works at our Billings program in Billings, Montana, and he is just knocking it out of the ballpark. So congratulations, Colin. He is a repeat winner, and we're glad to see you on top of the leaderboard this year. Thank you. Yeah, outstanding results, thank you. and thank you for working with us. Yay, there's Craig. Colin. <laughs> Colin Craig. It's okay. <laughs> okay, superior outcomes in egg vitrification warming. The practice award, drum roll please, 2020 goes to Buffalo Infertility and IVF Associates with a clinical pregnancy rate of 73.9%. Again, it's a first time practice win for Buffalo Infertility and IVF Associates leading our outcomes this year. An absolutely phenomenal program. We're proud of you. Great job. We also have a, a, a practice award for the large volume with an N of 50 or greater warming events. And the, this year's recipient is Shady Grove Fertility in Rockville.
with an overall pregnancy rate of 70.8%. Yeah, I just want to add to this accomplishment. It is really difficult for a large program to achieve consistency with so many embryologists warming. And this is why we want to look at a program that has greater than 50, because we know there are many embryologists involved, and they all have to be solid and do well in order to achieve this award. It's a very strong accomplishment. Well done. This year, we have an inaugural award by our sister company, California Cryobank Sperm Bank. It is called the Ally in Outcomes Award. Many of us, you know how difficult it is for us to constantly contact you to say, get your outcomes in, get your outcomes in. But it is even harder for a sperm bank that ships more than 100 vials of sperm a day to get all of their outcomes in. This program, this practice is a true ally. The clinicians, the physicians, the patients report their outcomes because the practice has encouraged them to do so. The inaugural winner for this practice award 2020 goes to Fertility Centers of Illinois, River North. Great group of nurses, many nurses, and they are true allies. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you to the laboratory team as well. You guys do an outstanding job. We're going to move now into looking at and celebrating the people who freeze the eggs in our network. We're going to do this in reverse order again from five to one. In our number five position, the winner this year is going to be? Jeff Gray, coastal fertility specialist with a clinical pregnancy rate of 47.8%. Jeff Gray is a first time winner for us. We are excited to see him in this position. Great job, Jeff, and great job leading the entire lab there. Outstanding work. Now we're going to recognize our number four recipient. The winner is? Tina Shoreman of Utah Fertility Center with a clinical pregnancy rate of 51.9%. Tina has done an incredible job. She's been on this leaderboard many times in the past. This is a high volume program and Tina has really kept the results top notch. Thank you, Tina. Thanks for all your hard work, Tina. And I should also add, this entire program, there were two other embryologists. Guys, you missed it by just a smidge. Tina, you're on there, but your coworkers are not far behind you. So <laughs> keep your eyes behind you, they're going to get you next year. <laughs> I hope so. So now I'm going to acknowledge our number three recipient. The award goes to? Yvonne Arthur for Fertility Institute of Hawaii with a clinical pregnancy rate of 53.8%. Two years in a row for Yvonne winning. So outstanding work by Yvonne and the whole team at Fertility Institute of Hawaii. And I know Hawaii is on here because I have seen them. So hopefully they'll be able to find your video and flip to you soon. OK, in our second position. Our number two award winner will be? Amber Brewer, Arizona Reproductive Medicine Specialist Clinical pregnancy rate of 56.8%. Amber is a, another one that's always on our leaderboard and unprecedentedly for the last two years has been the number one freezer. So this year she stumbled a bit, but it shows how competitive this actual um, group is. We still think of Amber as the queen. She's been slightly dethroned, but you are awesome, Amber. We're glad to have you as part of our team and you have outstanding results. Yep, keep up the good work. So now we get to ask who's number one this year. The person that's number one in egg freezing this year, the award goes to? Jamie Kim, Fertility Institute of Hawaii, with a clinical pregnancy rate of 63.6%. Great job, Jamie. Outstanding work. Jamie and the team at uh, Fertility Institute of Hawaii, very consistent, very strong performers. We're so proud to work with you all. And you know, let me just add, Dr. Fratarelli in Hawaii, thank you also for your support. You have two embryologists on that leaderboard, and that doesn't happen by accident. 
That happens because there is a physician that stands behind his team, and you encourage them to do their best. So thank you. Yep. It's a good uh, example for everybody. Now we're going to go on to the actual practice award for egg vitrification, which program is producing the most consistent results. And the award this year goes to? For the third time in a year, Arizona Reproductive Medicine Specialist with a clinical pregnancy rate of 56.8%. Again, I just have to mention, this is a third time practice award win. Congratulations, Dr. Moffitt, Amber Brewer. You guys are the dream team. And I, I want to recognize Dr. Moffitt because your stimulation has to be completely on target with your donors. Your vitrification has to be solid to produce these high clinical pregnancy rates for eggs that go amongst 200, more than 250 practices. And we're still getting a 56.8% clinical pregnancy rate. Great job. Consistent, outstanding results. So this is my favorite award uh, because I know that you can have a phenomenal lab and you can have great physicians, but if we don't have the support team, the nurses and the medical assistants that help that patient through the journey, that cheerlead that patient, keep their spirits up, help them move on with treatment, get the medication right, it, it, it just doesn't all work. It's and a team so effort, no doubt. The Patient Care Award this year for 2020 goes to an extremely special nurse who we've worked with now for several years. She has a huge caseload. She is always there for her patient. We can call her at a moment's notice, and she troubleshoots like an amazing queen that she is. And this year's Patient Care Award goes to... Julia Razkanoff rn from Boston IVF. Congratulations, Julia. You are a gem to work with. We are really happy to be working with you. Oh, great, we get to see the team over there. Outstanding work. So happy to work with you guys. And the performance is consistent, reproducible, and it's just a, just a testament to the work you all do. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so another year has gone by, a very special COVID-19 year. But we know with your expertise and your support, we are excited to look into 2021. We know that we're gonna continually blaze new trails and we're going to improve outcomes. We're going to reach the limit of what human biology can provide us. It is our honor to work with you. We hope to visit you in 2021 and to celebrate in person your achievements. We thank you, we're honored to be part of you, we're proud of you. Thank you to all recipients. It's such a pleasure to work with all of you, and we look forward to the year ahead. Congratulations.